What's happening YouTube? It's just a quick update on some of my electronics projects and where they're at. I got two major things that I'm trying to build right now. Uh, the function generator, the XR2206 function generator. Had a little setback on that, but it wasn't a setback. I'll get to that in a second. And this is a mixer. I'm actually trying to build a little mixer for uh, the circuits, the oscillators that I'm going to be building. Um, this is my first stab at it. It's basically it's using a 3M, excuse me, an LM386 um, amplifier. And right now I have it working in stereo, but I've got three inputs, and then those go to the output, which is here, and I can amplify, excuse me, change the volume here. And then I can do panning to either the left or the right. The problem is, though, is that I want to be able to do panning per individual input. So I'm going to redo that here, and it's going to require two uh, 386 chips. And the reason why is because one is going to be for the left and one is for the right. And I'm basically going to have the inputs. We'll choose to go either to the left one or to the right one. Fingers crossed that that's going to work. We'll see. But these little guys here are going to be the speakers for it. And my idea is to build these little daughter boards, solder these into here. And then I've got uh, these female and male headers that are going to go into, I'm hoping to use this PC board for the mixer board, pardon the glare. And uh, so it's big enough, and I'll basically just sort of plug in the speakers. I guess I can use this guy. They'll kind of go over here on, on the edges is the idea. Not really sure. Somehow I would like to use uh, this DC jack instead, but I don't know how I'm going to drill these into these holes. So I thought about maybe drilling the DC jack into more of this sort of uh, proto board and then cut it away. I'll worry about that later though. But um, this guy's pretty cool. I built him first. This is another 386 chip that I'm using to basically, I can plug this into like any breadboarded oscillator and just immediately get some, some results. That's the idea. The mixer is going to be a little different, a little bit more of a larger endeavor, but check this out. This guy actually gets pretty loud. So that's really handy for me right there. When I'm working on an oscillator, I can just, you know, take this out. I can only use one hand right now, so I need two hands to take this thing out. But then I can turn it around and put it into the XR2206 that I'm working on. So what was the problem? Uh, the problem was is that, well, first of all, you've got two output pins. One is a square wave on 11 and the other is on pin 2 and provides either a sine wave or a triangle wave. When I put this guy, excuse me, when I would take the output from 2, the triangle or the sine wave, into here, nothing happens. It just uh, just it just sucks up. It's just gone. Well, I found out today that I basically am taking the input into into this circuit into the inverting input of the IC, not the non-inverting input. That may have something to do with it because whenever I take the output from this guy into into, into the mixer I'm working on here, it works fine. So what I need to really establish next is just make sure that I've got my resistance values for the uh, amplitude for each of the input signals correct. The panning works for this one, but it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't make sense to just pan the final output of all your mixed oscillators, either left or right. This way I could have two or three coming in and have them go into one or the other. Uh, this is one of the first speakers that I had. It came out of a greeting card. It's very, very low. And this one is actually a pretty nice speaker, but I'm definitely going to use these two pairs because they're, they're, they're more matched, get a better sound. Uh, these wires are really tiny, so I'm going to take these off. I've already tried to use them before when uh, when I was working on this one, but I don't know if you can see or not. Probably not, but I'm not using the original wires on the speaker for that. And the main reason why is because I can't strip them. They're so, so thin that I can't even like strip off the edges of them. So I'll just pull them off the end there and get some new wires, probably red and black, just so I can see. It doesn't really make much of uh, the difference there, not really. Oh, I got this guy fixed. Uh, remember I had a jumper. I put in a switch and in the process of getting the switch in I also fixed the errors that I had in that little spot right here where my finger is. I corrected that and everything works great now with this little guy. He works pretty well with 
this amplifier as well, but what I have to do is this has to have power. And so I have to have ground and the signal coming in. So, you know, again, this is not really for existing circuits like this. This is for, for circuits that live on, on the breadboard. And so I can, like, just get immediate results. That's the important thing about this is just being able to get feedback, which, you know, I get really good feedback with the oscilloscope better than my ears can handle a lot of times because there, there were times when I didn't think I was getting any signal at all, but I was when I checked with the oscilloscope. Couldn't hear it, but I could see it. Uh, apart from that, I got one more project I'm going to work on. I purchased the uh, Jane Power uh, Dual Power Supply. It provides um, plus and minus 15 volts, you know, a variable. So you know, like 9 volt, 12 volt, 15 volts. I'll probably be going with 12 volts. But now I got like a nice, easy way to get negative and positive, as long as I can put this together correctly and not shock myself in the process of doing it. I've got some more parts coming in, uh, a couple uh, posts, red and black posts that might look nicer on this thing, but I may put this into a case and have the post attached to the case. I would like to get a couple voltmeters so I could actually see what the rating is without having to use my uh, multimeter every time that I adjust it. That would be pretty nice. And But that's about it for now. Um, I am in the process of reading this book, which is just an amazing book. Um, this is a book that we had at the program that I went to school in at the 90s, audio program that I attended. And this was like the uh, senior level uh, book. I wish I had bought it back then, but I was able to get a copy now. And it's just been a great read. It's been invaluable. Also got another, well, actually I have two more, but this just came in today, uh, volume two. There's some nice stuff in here, and I've been really enjoying volume four, but I probably will not get volume three. We'll see. I'm, not, I'm in no hurry to get that one. But that's about it. Um, almost the delay pedal. The delay pedal. Oh, I need to get this thing fixed. I got uh, I got uh, two more potentiometers. I, I broke two of them, unfortunately. Getting away from that glare. Glare's everywhere. But these buttons, the momentary buttons, this one doesn't do anything, and this one makes a horrible crackling pop, which will destroy your speakers. So I got more work to do on this thing. But all of the pots work, so that's great. So, got that going for me. Let's see. And that's about it. So, I'll see you all on the flip side. Hopefully, you'll see some of these things been realized and soldered on to prototype boards next time you see this stuff. Oh, yeah, before I go, these little guys are kind of cool. This allows me to easily plug in 8-inch uh, patch cords to get inputs and outputs for my breadboards. Just plug them right in, and I've got ground, so I just have like a, something going to ground, and then whatever my input is on the red side there. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.